On Monday night, the New York Mets showed us that they can still be a great baseball team. They got a vintage performance from Max Scherzer, and the lineup looked amazing, putting up 11 runs. Is there finally some hope for this team? We'll be discussing that and more on today's edition of Locked on Mets. You are Locked on Mets, your daily New York Mets podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello to all you uh, amazing Mets fans. You're watching Locked On Mets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Ryan Finkelstein. If you want to find any of my work, follow me on Twitter at Finkelstein Ryan. You can also find some of my writing at JustBaseball.com, where I work as the managing editor. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code LOCKDOWNMLB for $20 off your first purchase. Last-minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Monday night was just a incredible game altogether. There's so many different areas where we can go to. We can go to Daniel Vogelback getting the scoring started with the solo home run. Tommy Pham staying hot. You know, Pete Alonzo, you're a little bit worried about how he's playing with this wrist. He had a double in this game and scored a run. Lindor hit a through run homer. Seems like he's coming out of it. There's a lot of guys that we can talk about, but none is more important. The Max Scherzer. This is what you need. I don't know how many times this season I have to say it on each side of it. When Scherzer's great, I say, look, this is what the Mets have to get for them to be the type of team that can make that run and, and, and find a way into October. They need it from Scherzer and Verlander, right? Then there's starts where they're bad. And it seems like it's one or the other. So hopefully Verlander can back this start up from Scherzer on a mound he's very familiar with in Houston, but that's what happens, right? It's either they're great, and it's like, all right, this is the Mets. This is what what you, you spent all that money for. This is the $86 million on two pitchers. You finally got it, and if they're bad, it's like, well, this is why this team can't get anywhere. So credit to Scherzer for showing up and having arguably his best start of the year. I mean, he was incredible. But through the first five innings, he gave up a single. That was it. And his pitch count was low. If not for the Mets putting up five runs in the ninth inning, this guy would have gone out there for a complete game. And I think he would have finished it for sure. Um, you know, he gave up a solo homer. That's it. And he he walked one uh, in that eighth inning, erased it with a double play ball. Uh, you know, it was just brilliance. And it was the slider, the same slider that put him in Cooperstown. Got eight strikeouts tonight, and that slider just had the Astros lineup in knots. The amount of guys that were getting check swings, called for strikes, just swords where you know, they they looked helpless. You know, they identify it's a slider when their bat's already around and when the pitch is out of the zone. And when he gets swings and misses like that on a slider, he's really tough to hit because he's just not going to give you anything you can handle. It's fastballs up in the zone, sliders out of the zone, and. If you can't keep that bat on your shoulder, well, he's going to carve you up. And, and the problem this year is that that great bite to a slider hasn't been there, and batters have been able to identify it and leave it, or he's been leaving it over the heart of the plate, and guys have been putting it in the seats. That's not what we saw in this start. And it felt like when he needed the extra velocity, he was able to get it as well, you know, touch 96 when he needed it, and, and – here you are, you know, here's a Mets team that if they get their aces to perform like this, and if the guys perform to the back of the baseball card in that lineup, they can go on a run. But I can't sit here after every single win and say, oh, this is the one. The momentum has shifted. I hope it did. It certainly felt like it. You watch a game like that, you see the collective relief kind of sweep across the entire team when, you know, for one, you see Scherzer be Scherzer, but then you have that big third inning where you're just able to grab that lead and it holds up. But, you know, you have Vogelback who's suddenly looking great at the plate. He's comfortable. He's looking a lot more confident. Um, he homers for the second time and what's been three starts back from his mental health break. 
You have Brett Beatty and Francisco Alvarez both get hits after him. Nimmo lined out, but then Starling Marte drove in one with a single. And then Francisco Lindor had a three-run homer. And there you are, five-run lead. And Scherzer, again, was nails, okay? He was just dominant. And so you go, you put up five, and what does Scherzer do? He works around a leadoff single, gets right back in the dugout. Then the Mets don't score anything in the fourth, comes right back there in the bottom of the fourth, one, two, three. And, you know, this team was able to, to stay comfortable. And in the sixth inning, they added more Tommy Pham with the double, Jeff McNeil driving him in with the base hit. Uh, you know, he continues to, to put up zero. Seventh inning, he finally gave up that one home run. But the Mets, you know, in that ninth, they, they get five back and, uh, you know, put them away. So it, it was just an all-around game. There was good defense played. You know, Brett Beatty making diving stops and double plays turned. And it was a confident ball club which we haven't seen in a while. And what you hope is it's not just, hey, one night, you know, baseball teams, even the worst ones are going to win 70 games. So, hey, this is just one of the 70 and you know, Justin Verlander is going to lay an egg. And then you know, Tyler McGill is going to be a pumpkin after a great start uh, the other night. And all of a sudden the Mets lose another series and they go into Philly. And here you are again, talking about same old Mets. That can still happen. It's on the table. But for a night, it felt different. And for a night, when you get that type of performance from Max Scherzer, when you see someone like Daniel Vogelbeck that was at the center of so much just Mets anguish this season, so much you know, conversation and, and, and you know, so many people getting on him, myself included, and why is this guy still on the roster, all of that. And now you give him a couple days off, suddenly he looks like a new person. And if he's clicking for you, and you got the 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 offense from the Tommy Fams of the world and Mark Canis and even Starlin Marte. He might not be hitting anything for extra bases, but he's getting knocked suddenly. It's it's a good baseball team when it seems like the most ridiculous, obvious statement. But when when things are firing on all cylinders like this, where you see guys who have been capable players throughout their careers. Be what they have been. Okay. Now the Mets are rolling a little bit, or for a night. That's the big thing. Let's see Justin Verlander go up and put up zeros in that mound that he knows so well. Give the Mets a series victory against a, an Astros team that certainly isn't what it's been. A team that's missing your on Alvarez, of course. But a team that we know is good, particularly playing in Houston. So... Go out, win a series on, on Tuesday, and then maybe we can start talking about some momentum being built. But uh, I, I love what I saw in this one. And, and uh, you know, in particular, the seashores are look like that. Let, let's see it happen moving forward because if he finally figured out whatever was ailing him with the health, um, you know, maybe you're going to get that guy that you just saw for the final you know, half of this season here, a little bit more than half of the season. And – Maybe the Mets have a little life in them just yet. Uh, Tommy Pham, though, is awesome. And I want to talk about it more in just a minute. Before we do, have you ever been in the situation where you need tickets to the game, but you just can't find anything at a price that is affordable? Well, game time's here to solve that problem for you. It's fast and easy. It's the best way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you with killer deals on last-minute tickets and their best price guarantee so you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun you'll have. You know, I needed to buy tickets this season for opening day. Went to game time, got a great price. The game time guarantee means you'll always have the best price. If you find tickets in the same section or row for less, game time's going to credit you 110% of the difference. The fastest growing ticketing app in the country for a reason. Get images of your seats before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. Buy tickets in a matter of seconds. Two taps, you're all set. Tickets are sent directly to your phone so you never have to dig through your email. You can snag tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code Lockdown MLB for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply again. Create an account, redeem the code Lockdown MLB for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. The New York Mets play the Houston Astros 8 10 Eastern Time on Tuesday night. If you want to catch every pitch, Mets hometown broadcast, you can do so with SiriusM. 
on the SXM app. Just search Mets. Now, on yesterday's show, I said today we would look into the Mets outfield situation. And for today's recording, if you're watching on YouTube, got a nice little Mets jersey on. If you don't know who the name on the back is, you haven't been a longtime listener of this show. But let me fill you in. 2021 season comes around. Jonathan VR was a Met that I thought they never should have signed. A guy that was going to take playing time away from guys that I appreciated more on the roster. And I thought, oh, what are they doing with Jonathan VR? And then he turned in a great season. And at the beginning of the season, I said something along the lines of, you know, Jonathan VR has an OPS over 700 this year. I'll buy a, a jersey. Well, here is my authentic Mets jersey with VR's name on the back that's been stuffed in the back of the closet for a little bit. Wanted to wear it today in honor of Tommy Pham because he was this year's jersey bet. And on May 24th, I was very confident I would never have to buy a Tommy Pham jersey. Okay, I did a podcast following the game on May 23rd that was released on the 24th. But why the Mets should cut Tommy Pham. He made a start um, in that game on the 23rd over Jeff McNeil. Went one for four and he made the last out of the game. Next start for him was on May 26th. He went 0 for 4 that game against the Rockies. Again, my prediction looked pretty good. He was hitting 200, 286 on base, 341 slug, three home runs, 10 RBIs in his first 35 games played. He had a weighted runs creative plus of 75 that measures hitters based on a league average of 100. So he was 25% worse than your league average hitter. At the time, his OPS was 627. And there was a great article that came out in The Athletic I'm a believe written by Tim Britton because he does cover the Mets for the athletic apologies if it was written by him, but it's about Tommy Pham and a meeting that Buck Schalter had with him, uh, Daniel Vogel back at water Escobar, Mark Canna, I believe where, you know, Pham wanted to basically prove the analytics department wrong. Cause he was only going to start like one game over the next seven days. Um, only against a lefty and basically was saying that in his career, he's been able to hit righties and lefties and, not liking to be pigeonholed into that role. Well, if he got pissed off the analytics department, it has worked. Um, if you saw a, a podcast um, on YouTube about someone saying the Mets should cut him, uh, it worked too. Whatever it was that pissed off Tommy Fan, if I contributed or if I didn't, if it was just the analytics to people, I- I'm happy. And I hope Tommy Fan plays pissed off all season. That's why I'm going to wait a little bit to buy this jersey. Not because I think the OPS will dip below 700, although you never know. 35-game sample size, it did. 15-game sample size, he's been unbelievable, and suddenly it's climbed up to 825. Actually, that's a 16-game sample since that date. Uh, But if you go to fan graphs, those stats had not been updated. So I looked from May 28th uh, when this started, you know, against the Rockies, where he went three for four with four runs batted in, to now. Minus this game today, it was a 15-game sample where Ty and Fan was hitting 340 with a 382 on base and a 740 slugging percentage. Four home runs over that span, 12 extra base hits. I think it's six doubles and a triple, um, or seven doubles and a triple. Nine runs scored, 17 runs batted in. You throw in the one from today, be 18 in 16 games. He has a 199 WRC+. plus. Again, he just went two for four, so that's going to go over 200, okay? So remember, that measure sitters on a league average of 100 means that he's been over 100% better than your league average hitter during this span. Seventh best WRC plus in all of baseball, so he's been a top 10 hitter in the game. This is a 55 plate appearance sample. You got four more added tonight. Um, He was actually had a walk today, so five more. So it becomes a 60 plate appearance sample uh, where, you know, he's been amazing. And he was two for four again uh, on this one. So that's going to raise that average in that span over 350. There's not enough you could say about him. And he's earning everyday playing time. Uh, he is just been an unbelievable hitter lately. It's a little over two weeks. It's still small sample size. But all season, they were talking about how hard time a fan was hitting the baseball. Um, part of that felt like. You know, hitting into some bad luck. Part of it to me was still not the best approach and hitting the ball on the ground a little bit too much and everything else. But guess what? He's getting the ball in the air 
and he is starting to hit the ball over their heads in the outfield, whether it be home runs or doubles. And it's just an unbelievable stretch drive by this guy. Um, and again, 825 OPS. That's one of the best hitters in this lineup. I mean, right now, it, it would take you, uh, you know, maybe only a couple of, of names that you'd want at the box right now more than him. I mean, what it would be. Pete Alonzo still won despite coming off the injury. Um, I don't know. Is he two? Is this the second guy that you want in the box in a big spot? Francisco Alvarez, maybe sample size a little bit larger. Um, you know, is it Lador based on the career and the track record? I don't know. Tommy Fam doesn't get much beyond that. Uh, you know, maybe Brandon Nimmo, but like this guy has just kind of changed the narrative of his season in a hurry. And look, he is a guy that can go hot and cold. Okay. He's a guy that you look up at the end of a season last year and, you know, the home runs are there, but the overall stats are bad. And he certainly can go into a 35 game funk, just like he was in at the beginning of this season or he falls out of the lineup and who knows, maybe the OPS dips below the 700. I, I don't know. But what you've got out of Tommy Pham is incredibly hard play for the most part. There was that one ball that he didn't run in for, but it seems like you know, he's running the bases hard today. There was a hustle double. Um, he's swinging out of his shoes, but uh, it's channeled aggression, I would say. So maybe not swinging out of the shoes is the right um, <laughs> way to describe it. He swings hard as hell, and when he connects, he can drive the baseball and drive it a long way. You've seen opposite field home runs. We've seen the doubles. We've seen everything else. He's been just the best part of this lineup lately. And when you start to get the Vogelbacks of the world hitting, when you have Starling Marte coming through a little bit more, when Lindor starts to break out of it, when you add the type of a bat back in the middle of the lineup that you have with Pete Alonso that is just feared, and you, you knock Tommy Pham down a couple pegs in that in that lineup, and you know you get him in a position where pitchers have to still throw to him, and he can make him pay a lot more than Marcana and Starling Marte, and even at times Brandon Nemo might just have the best power bat in that outfield. Um, and moving forward, the Mets are going to need every bit of it. But how do they break up all the playing time? Um, between so many guys that maybe are starting to turn that corner because along with fam who's been the best of the bunch in that same span, you've actually gotten good production from Mark Hanna as well. And Stanley Marte. And of course, Brandon Nemo is an everyday player. So how do you mix it all up? Particularly where your DH spot is starting to, to get filled by Vogel back again, who's been good for a three game sample. I'm going to discuss all of that in just a minute. First though, another word from our sponsors. The New York Mets are set to play the Houston Astros again at 8:10 Eastern Time tonight. If you want to catch every pitch of the Mets hometown broadcast, you can do so with Sirius XM on the SXM app. Now, looking at the outfield for the Mets in this same period since uh, May 28th, when Tommy Pham has gone off, you have Mark Canna hitting 275, 4, 420 on base percentage, 500 slug, two home runs, 11 RBIs. Walking 16% of the time, only striking out 14% of the time. So giving you great Mark Canna production, right? Getting on base, not striking out, putting the ball in play, drawing his walks, doing what they love from Moneyball, right? That's what Mark Canna has been um, in this stretch. And Starling Marte is hitting over 300, 308, 348 on base, 415 slug. Trying to remember if there was, uh, I know he had an eight game hang streak. It might have just gone to nine um, with the two for five day today. When Starling Marte is hitting over 300, that's where you know he is comfortable and confident in the box. Now, he's not driving the baseball, only four extra base hits in a 17 game span where Fam has 12. Um, you have Nimmo and Canna both at five in that same stretch. 116 weighted runs created plus, so he's only been 16% better than your league average hitter. Uh, Mark Cannon was in the 160s. I believe he was a top 30 hitter in baseball uh, during this period as well. So, you know, Canna and Fam have been better lately. Nimmo's been better throughout the season. You got four good outfielders right now, which is what every team would love to have. And it's just a matter of how you mix up the playing time. And, you know, with three spots in a DH, 
you get these guys out there, right? They're going to be able to find their time. If you look at it as you have six games a week, three outfield spots, that's 18 starts to go around. You know, Nimmo's probably going to get all six. So that gives you 12 spots to split up between Marte, Canna, and Fam. Five probably go to Marte with the day off. So that gets you to 11 of the 18. Then you split the other, you know, seven between Canna and Fam. Uh, so that gets you, you know, maybe four starts in the outfit for Canna, three for Fam. And then you can get Fam a couple of DH days. Um, and maybe Can is the guy that is playing four days a week. Fam's playing, you know, five as is Marte, and, and you got Nemo playing all six. If that's your typical week, so there's still the playing time out there where you can make it all work. And I think this roster makes a lot more sense now than it did a week ago, even because suddenly after the mental health break, Daniel Vogelback looks good again. And so if he can cover a lot of those, you know, games against right-handed pitching at DH, and Tommy Fam going out there against lefties and you know, you, you have Canna and Marte and Nemo, of course, in the outfield, you have Jeff McNeil and door Alonzo Beatty almost every day in the infield. You know, maybe you steal uh, games against left-handed pitching for a Escobar, which of course is not great because Bay's been good against lefties this year, but you have to get everyone playing time. I, I get that. And obviously there's going to be the games where Guillaume is going to get out there, but, I feel like you're at a point right now where Guillaume and Escobar are going to be the less frequently used guys that for Guillaume, he'll be more of a, you know, glove late for Escobar. The the pinch hitting opportunity against left-handed pitching, always something the Mets could go to Omar Nervaez and Alvarez split in catching time about 70, 30. I would imagine with Alvarez, obviously taking the heavy share of it. This roster makes a lot of sense right now. As much as everyone's still going to be banging the drum for Ryan Mauricio to come up, I don't think that's something the Mets should be going to anytime soon. This is the team that you roll with until you get to the all-star break. Potentially the team you roll with until you get to the deadline. You have veterans in there who have to just be better than they've been throughout the season, and lately they have come around. And I, I think the lineup is at a point where you feel pretty good about it. So it's really just a question of can you figure out a bullpen it's not going to blow these games. And can you get the consistent starting pitching, particularly from the top of the rotation? And that's where all eyes will be on Justin Verlander in this one. Can he go into Houston against a team that knows him very well, but in a ballpark that he's very familiar with and have a great start and keep this momentum rolling and help the Mets win a series early? That's what you need to have happen. And then maybe you can get greedy in the final game. But we'll, we'll get to that on tomorrow's show for all you everydayers. For now, that's going to be all for the show. Make sure you follow, rate, and review wherever you get your podcast. Make sure you follow me on Twitter, Finkelstein Ryan. Follow the show at Locked On Mets. If you want to catch every pitch of the Mets hometown broadcast tonight, you can do so with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just search Mets.